हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर प्रवेश कृष्णन एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट क्यूलेंस मेरी सिंड्रोम विथ ए क्लिनिकल केस मेनली एन ऑस्की सीरीज सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विथ ए क्लिनिकल केस ए 24 ईयर ओल्ड वुमेन who developed numbness and tingling of feet and hand followed by progressive leg more than arm muscle weakness over the last week she experienced a diarrheal illness 3 weeks ago that has resolved within 10 days examination so marked white facial weakness and absence of muscle stretch reflex she had not a feet prick like this to try septic as well as vibration sensation leg strain is 2y5 and arm strain is 3y5 with more proximal and distal weakness she could not stand up or walk with assistance further horse vital capacity was 2 liter lab studies were done with so vitamin b12 level at 2 hours glucose tolerance test we had not done there was no serum monoclonal protein csf study was done with so no white blood cells but protein was 82 mg per deciliter further not conduction studies was done with so 50% delay in eval and median egg wave latency sensory conduction so normal sural and absent median potential so she was started on intravenous gamma globulins she started improving in strength within 2 weeks she could ambulate with a walker at 2 months at independently at 6 month what is your diagnosis friends we will come to this clinical case but first let us discuss an interesting topic that is bullen berry syndrome this bullen berry syndrome occurs because of minor triggers as well as cit and respiratory infections the minor triggers that can lead to cbs are surgery trauma hoskins lymphoma systemic lupus erythematosus sarcoidosis tumor necrosis factor alpha therapy GIT and respiratory infections that can trigger GBS are Campylobacterium zeni infections, the GIT infections, Mycoplasma pneumoniae, the respiratory infections, vaccines which can lead to the manifestations of GBS are influenza vaccination, rabies vaccination. and the like jaika virus infections can trigger tbs because of these triggers with a minor or major trigger could initiate an immune responses it will lead to formation of inflammatory biomarkers namely interleukin 2 tumor necrosis factor alpha as well as interferon gamma and another mechanism through which GBS could occur is the molecular mimicry. Molecular mimicry is defined as the antibody which are formed against these pathogens, pathogenic protein host, will cross react with the body cells. These mainly cross react with the ganglionic cells at peripheral nerves, which begins at the nerve root. because of this pathophysiology there can be demyelinations in which the antibody acts against the swan cells or there can be axonal damage 
in which the antibody acts against the load of ranvier. And because of these two pathophysiology, we can have different variants of the CVS. If it is a demyelinating event, we can have AIDP that is acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy which accounts for 80 to 90 percent of the cases. And another demyelinating event which can occur is the Miller Fisher syndrome which accounts for 5 percent of the cases. Adrenal damage which will lead to the variants of the GVS are acute motor axonal neuropathy that is AMAN or acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy that is AMSAN. And this axonal damage accounts for 10% of the cases of GVS. And another fact about the GVS is that demyelinating events is segmental in nature. Because of this pathophysiological mechanism, we can have different clinical features in our patient. The clinical manifestations that can be noticed in the patient is the motor deficit in which limb weakness which starts first from leg and then ascends up to the heart in an ascending fashion on examinations, there will be a reflex here. Sensory deficit that can be found in our patient could be pain and paresthesia. If a patient gets an urinary symptoms early in the disease course, then our diagnosis of GVS should be questioned. That is, urinary symptoms occur late in GVS. Dysautonomia with BP patients, orthostatic hypotensions, phrenic nerve palsy will lead to diaphragmatic paralysis. Cranial neuropathy, which can be found in a patient, could be third, fourth, and sixth of low motor, which is found in the Miller Fisher syndrome. Bulbar muscle palsy with 9, 10, 11. And 12th cranial nerve with the features of nasal regurgitations and respiratory failure to vision. To summarize, with the Gulen Mary syndrome can occur because of minor or major triggers, which will lead to immune responses as well as molecular mimicry. This antibody will act against the ganglionic cells. And this antibody could be of diagnostic importance. The different antibodies that are formed in the GVS are anti GA1 antibody, GAQ antibody, and GT1 antibody. These are the different antibodies that can be formed in GVS. Apart from it, if the process is demyelinating, on nerve conduction study, we will have decreased conduction velocity and conduction blocks. If it is an axonal damage, then it will lead to decreased CMAP amplitude with normal conduction velocity. Thus, by nerve conduction velocity, we can differentiate the different variants of the GBS. Further, these different variants of the GBS will lead to either motor, sensory, autonomic, phrenic nerves or cranial neuropathy. Here is the diagnostic criteria for Gulen Berry syndrome and this diagnostic criteria is called as Asperg criteria. The features that are required for diagnosis of GBS are progressive weakness of both legs and arm and areflexia or hyporeflexia. Clinical features supporting the diagnosis are progressions over days to weeks, that is up to 
Corvids, Relative Symmetry of the Symptoms and Signs, Mild Sensory Symptoms, Bifacial Palsy, Autonomic Dysfunction, Absence of Fever at the Onset, and Recovery within 2-4 to four weeks after progression. The laboratory features which supports the diagnosis are elevated CSF proteins with cells less than 10 cells per microliter and on MCV we will have features of nerve conduction flowing or blocked. Summary of our case includes a 24 year old woman developed numbness and tingling of feet and hands, followed by progressive legs, more than arm muscle weakness over last week. This was acute in all things, rapidly progressive, symmetrical, ascending lower limbs weakness, followed by arm weakness for the past two days with white facial weakness. With the features of respiratory muscles involvement with diarrheal in less three weeks ago that had resolved within 10 days without bladder, vowel, autonomic, parabellar, or extra pyramidal involvement. On examination, deep tendon reflects their absent. CSF examination shows albuminocytological dissociation and nerve conduction velocity so decreased air wave latency that is feature of nerve conduction slowing up so our diagnosis becomes the functional diagnosis will be classic quadriplasis anatomical diagnosis it will mean peripheral nerves being then what pathological diagnosis will be immunological mechanisms with the features of molecular mimicry being the mechanism involved, pathological diagnosis includes Golden Vary syndrome. And the subtype includes acute inflammatory, demyelinating, polyneuro.